Hello. In this video, we will be discussing pin height adjustment. For this adjustment, we'll need a 9 16 wrench, a half inch wrench, and a shim set. If you don't have a shim set, contact Cody for purchase. Pin height is a critical specification provided by the CAN manufacturer spec sheet. If you do not have that spec sheet, you can calculate it with the following equation, or you can contact your end manufacturer to see if they will provide you with one. For this calculation, take the flange can height, which can be found on the can body specific spec sheet, or measured with calipers, and minus the countersink, which can be measured with special tooling, or found on the end specific spec sheet, minus 42 thousandths of an inch, which is an accepted deflection value that accounts for material properties. If a seam spec sheet is available, gather it and note the specific can size that is being run. In this example, we will be using 16 ounce cans. To begin, measure the current pin height. If this measurement is unfamiliar, refer to the Cody pin height measurement video. Note the current pin height and write this down somewhere. Now compare the current pin height to the target specification. The current pin height is 5.901 and the target spec is 5.880 plus or minus three. We will always aim to be right on spec. So we need to come down 21 thousandths of an inch. Always shim from the seamer uprights and not the height pins. This is because this will allow us to adjust pin height both up and down, whereas shimming from the height pins would only allow us to adjust up. When you add shims, you are raising each of the plates, which will increase pin height, and when you remove shims, you will be lowering pin height. As a general rule, when adding shims, increase with several small shims as opposed to one large one. That way, if pin height needs to be lowered a little in the future, this will be made easier. Take the 9 16 wrench and loosen the bolts about halfway for the front uprights. Next, take the wrench and loosen the back bolts for the uprights until the lock washers have disengaged. Now disengage the back seamer height pin bolt with a half inch wrench. Then remove the bolts for the side height pins and loosen the front bolt about halfway. A pivot point has now been established so that when the seamer is lowered it will cantilever, allowing access to the shims. If the seamer is taking effort to lower, stop and assess. This jack is strong enough to bend the top plate. Evaluate the shim stack and determine what needs to be added or removed. In this example, a 20,000 shim will be removed. Raise the seamer up until the plate is flush and reverse the procedure. Tighten the front bolts down until hand tight and loosen the back bolts halfway out. Lower the seamer and adjust the back stack to match the front. Once adjusted, raise the seamer back up and tighten the upright bolts with the 9 16 wrench and the height pin bolts with the half inch wrench. If the seamer height bolts want to cross thread, lower the seamer slightly to get the pins to line up with the bolts. Once finished, check the joist jack handle to make sure there is no load on the jack and the handle is in a neutral position. Finally, remeasure pin height and adjust as necessary.